I looked at her as if she were mad, which caused her to yell, My God, your dad spoke to me. I stared at her as if she had lost her mind, which made her yell, My God, your dad spoke to me. Don't be so daft, I replied. She insisted she had heard him. Don't be so daft, I replied, brushing it off, but she was adamant. I swear, I heard him, she insisted. Well, what did he say? I asked, humouring her. Well, what did he say? I asked, half humouring her. It was good night or go goodbye, but it sounded distorted like out of a broken radio, so I can't be sure. It was either good night or goodbye, but it sounded distorted like it was coming through a broken radio. I can't be certain, she said. I looked at her, thinking she must be overtired, imagining things, but she was sure, and soon I was sure, she had heard what she had heard my father, distorted by distance or time or God knows what, speaking to her. I looked at her, thinking she must be overtired, imagining things, but she was so convinced and soon I began to believe her too. She had heard something my father, distorted by distance, time, or something else beyond our understanding, speaking to her. It sounded ridiculous, the kind of thing you see on TV or hear on those radio stations with lots of adverts, but it had happened to my wife. I had no reason to doubt her, no reason to think she was lying. The more I considered the event, the surer of an afterlife I became, though I have no desire to preach here. It sounded absurd, like something you'd see on TV or hear on one of those late night radio shows full of wild claims and adverts, but it had happened to my wife and I had no reason to doubt her, no reason to think she was lying. The more I thought about it, the more certain I became of an afterlife, though I don't intend to preach. The thought of him being still present in some form was comforting, if disturbing, but later on things became creepy and weird for me, for me, family, even for my usually sceptical brother. The idea that he might still be present in some form was oddly comforting, though also unsettling. But then things got strange creepy, even not just for me, but for my entire family, including my usually sceptical brother. Then it was a smell of toast all over the house. First it appeared when my mother went to the kitchen to make a cup of tea. A smell of toast filled the room, hot buttered toast. It began with the smell of toast permeating the house. The first time it happened when my mother went into the kitchen to make a cup of tea. Suddenly the room was filled with the unmistakable aroma of hot buttered toast. <laughs> 